Hi all, this is Pragya Shrastava, an educator on Unacademy. Follow me on Unacademy Learning app, we'll find many more courses. And in this lesson, let's continue our studies on concrete gravity depth and analyze the forces that may be acting on it. The major resisting force that is actually acting on the dam is the self weight of the dam. It includes the weight of the dam and its foundation. While doing the two dimensional analysis of dam, we assume a unit length and do our calculation work. The next force that may be acting is because of the ice, ice pressure. It is formed on water surface of reservoir in cold countries and uh, it actually melts and may expand. The dam face is subjected to thrust exerted by this expanding ice and the this force acts linearly along the length of the dam and at the reservoir level. The magnitude of this force normally varies from 250 to 1500 kN per square meter depending upon the temperature variations and on an average we take a value of 500 kN per meter square under ordinary circumstances. Now come to silt pressure. If H is the height of the silt deposit, then the forces exerted by this silt in addition to the external water pressure is given by Rankine's formula. I hope you remember the Rankine's formula. The pressure because of silt is actually equal to half gamma z h square k a acting at a height of h by 3 from the base of dam. What is k a here? k a is equal to 1 minus sin phi upon 1 plus sin phi. The coefficient of active earth pressure phi. Phi is the angle of internal friction. What is gamma z? The submerged unit weight of silt material. And h? h is the height of silt deposited. Now let's see the wave pressure. Waves are generated on the surface of the reservoir by blowing winds which exert a pressure on the downstream side. Wave pressure depends upon the wave height and it is measured from top of the crest HW. You can see here if this is your gravity dime and this is the wave that is actually formed then what I am saying that HW is measured from the top of the crest. This is your HW top of the crest or from the reservoir level to the bottom of trough or to the crest level. This height is HW. And HW is actually equal to 0 0.032 under root PV plus 0 0.763 minus 0 0.271 multiplied by F raised to power 1 by 4. In case F is less than 32 kilometer, what is F? F is the straight length of water expand in kilometer, also called fetch. And 
If F is greater than 32 km, in that case, we take this HW to be equal to 0 0.032 under root Vf. What is V? The wind velocity in kilometer per hour. The maximum pressure intensity due to wave is actually given by Pw is equal to 2.4 gamma W Hw and it acts at Hw by 2 meter above the still water level. The pressure distribution is triangular. It is assumed to be triangular and the height is 5 Hw by 3. By 5, adding this Hw and this 2 by 3 Hw. So, we assume that the press pressure distribution um, acts at the uh, acts at a height of 5 hw by 3. The total force due to the wave action is actually equal to half base into height half 2.4 gamma w hw multiplied by 5 hw by 3 and this overall force acts at a height of 3 upon 8 Hw above the reservoir level. This is the position where the force is assumed to be acting and this height is nothing but 3 by 8 Hw. Now let's see the pressure that is actually acting on the reservoir because of the earthquake. What happens is that earthquake sets up waves in earth's crust. These waves impart acceleration to foundation under the dam and this results in movement of your foundation. And to avoid rupture, if the foundation is moving, the dam, which is actually lying above the foundation, must also move with it. And because the earthquake waves can move in any direction, we are going to resolve it in horizontal direction and in vertical directions. Now let's see the effect of horizontal acceleration. The horizontal acceleration imparted by the earthquake waves results in the formation of inertia force or it can be a hydrodynamic pressure. Inertia force where your F is actually equal to W alpha, W being the weight of the dam and alpha is nothing but acceleration coefficient. So, the inertia force uh, actually acts in a direction opposite to the acceleration imparted by earthquake forces. Now, let us see the hydrodynamic pressure. The horizontal acceleration of the dam and foundation towards the reservoir actually causes a momentary increase in water pressure since the water resists the movement owing to inertia. And so the pressure is developed and that what pressure is called hydrodynamic pressure. This pressure variation is elliptical cum parabolic shape and the hydrodynamic pressure is actually equal to 0 0.555 alpha wh square and it acts at a height of 4 by 3 pi multiplied by h above the base. 
and as far as the vertical acceleration effect of vertical acceleration uh, is there uh, uh, vertical inertia force f which is again equal to alpha w is exerted on the dam in the direction opposite to that of the acceleration when the acceleration is vertically upwards the inertia force f alpha w acts vertically downwards and it increases momentarily the downward weight now please go through these uh, total forces and we'll study more on it in our next lesson till meanwhile keep studying